And it's an honor to be with all of you here today at the Toronto Global Forum. I'm really excited uh, to be here. You know, when I was looking at the theme, uh, chartering a new economy, and I saw the promo video that talked about recession, that talked about high inflation, and that talked about supply chain disruption. These are unquestionably challenges we're facing today, but I'm here to talk to you about Ontario's clean, green future and why I'm bullish and why I'm excited about the future in Ontario. The future is a bright one, and the future is a bright one because we're supporting the creation of jobs, growth and prosperity, attracting business investments, lowering costs, reducing red tape, and enhancing access to capital. We've been building an economy in the province of Ontario that works for workers, makes it easier to do business, and provides for hardworking Ontario families. As Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks, I can assure you that each and every day working towards this goal, we grapple with job creation and attracting investment while preserving the incredible natural beauty that we know and love in Canada, in Ontario, and positioning this province as a leader in attracting investment and leveraging the incredible talent that we have in the province of Ontario to build clean, green growth for generations to come. And we're doing it by sitting down with business, sitting down with communities, indigenous communities, peoples, stakeholders, and so many more. We will not achieve a net zero future, a cleaner, greener future solely on the backs of taxing Ontarians. We do it through leveraging technology, through leaning on Ontarians and the incredible talent that our college and university system boasts. I'm excited to talk to you about a couple key things that has me excited and I know is positioning Ontario for this exciting future. First, I wanna start with critical minerals. Just as an example, I recently am on the heels of a tour of Northern Ontario and I've got to say, if you haven't had a chance to visit Timmins, Cochrane, Sudbury as of late, it's an exciting place. It's an exciting place where the conversation of, of building homes underpins the desire to bring world-class talent to the north to leverage the province's critical mineral strategy. We know that Northern Ontario contains one of the most promising mineral deposits in the world. Why does this matter? Because of course these critical minerals are on the forefront of electrification. Electrification of the electric vehicle sector. So that's why in March, Ontario unveiled the Critical Mineral Strategy, which is a five-year roadmap to help strengthen Ontario's position as a global leader in supplying critical minerals, including Ontario's EV and battery manufacturing industries, one of the most sustainable uh, technologies of the future. We see EVs and green vehicles as a huge part of the new economy, and we're partnering with the incredible, incredible mining companies that are making this a reality. I think to recent visits where I saw firsthand Matagami, First Nation community, the work they're doing on reclamation. Our critical mineral strategy and critical minerals exploration starts with reclamation on day one today in the province of Ontario. And I was excited to learn from elders from that community and the work that they're doing. Takwa Tagamu First Nation community who is building equity in nickel and the incredible opportunity that we're seeing north of Timmins. These are just some of the partnerships we're forging thanks to this strategy and the leadership of Premier Ford to unlock the potential that is Northern Ontario. And we're building this future in this province. Our proximity to these critical minerals is just one of the many advantages we're leveraging in this province. We're the only place in North America, believe it or not, the only place where five major automakers build their vehicles. Stellantis, GM, Ford, Honda, and Toyota all have chosen Ontario to invest and build. And why? Why are they choosing Ontario? Worldwide, we're seeing climate fi financing for grid investments. Um, it's not just a product you make, it's how you make it. And there's a real fundamental understanding. These are conversations that we had in COP last year at Glasgow and conversations that will continue uh, into Egypt next month. And they're doing that because of our world-class energy grid. More than 94% of Ontario's electricity is greenhouse gas, GHG emissions free. On my way in, I saw the incredible team 
at Bruce Power on the forefront of our clean grid. Of course, Bruce and OPG were also uh, leaders in the development of small modular nuclear reactors. This green energy is a made in Ontario advantage. If a company is looking to reduce their GHG emissions, they need look no further than this great province. Jurisdictions that we're competing with, and it's not just the provinces of this great nation, it's states that are south of the border. And they just don't compare to Ontario's advantage. Michigan has 36% clean energy, or Ohio, which is about 17%. Another innovation uh, that we're seeing and innovative partnerships that we formed is with the steel sector, a partnership with Algoma and DeFasco. As a son of, an, of a grandson of an Italian immigrant that came to this nation with nothing in his pockets, started a career in the steel sector, and now two generations later, his grandson is Minister of the Environment, I'm incredibly proud that not through driving industry out with punishing taxation, but through working with industry, with Algoma and DeFasco, working with those two partners, we've seen the incredible electrification of the arc furnace, clean steel made right here in Ontario that will provide clean green jobs for generations to come, for that future boy or girl looking to create a future and a promising future in this great country. We've seen uh, the value that this provides uh, from a climate perspective, 6 million tons of CO2 emissions a year by 2030. That's the equivalent of taking 2 million cars off the road every year. Working with Ontario business is the key to our government's success. By partnering with these businesses, we can work together to build a greener and more prosperous province for everyone. For companies looking to reduce that footprint through their supply chain, the prospect of getting cleaner, greener steel is very attractive. Auto manufacturers, as I mentioned, have certainly noticed this. In the past two years, we've secured a string of historic investments. In fact, $16 billion in automotive investments. Investments that are making our province a leading green technology hub. Stellantis and LG Energy Solutions are building the province's first ever large-scale electric vehicle battery manufacturing plant. It's incredibly exciting for the men and women on the forefront of that green future and of the electric vehicles that we'll be driving in the years to come. This $5 billion investment is the largest auto manufacturing investment in Ontario's history and puts the province on a path to becoming one of North America's most advanced automotive jurisdictions in the EV market. Honda is making a $1.4 billion investment to retool its Alliston assembly plant to launch its next generation models. And Ford Motor Company is investing $1.8 billion to transform its Oakville assembly complex into a global hub for battery electric vehicle production. And of course, in General Motors, in my community, where not too long ago, people were worried about the future of their jobs, the biggest sign we see in our community now apart from uh, the highway uh, investments and, and roads and bridges investments that all levels of government are making, is the help wanted sign that we see with the third shift that they're adding at GM. And these investments, as I mentioned, are creating thousands of new uh, good direct jobs in communities across the province. Let me give you a few other examples of what we're doing to reduce our GHG emissions and to help the private sector achieve their net zero goals. On January 1st this year, we launched Emissions Performance Standards, it's, or EPS. It's making polluters accountable for their greenhouse gas emissions with a tough but fair system with long-term investments into technology and a pathway to see Ontario continue to maintain and attract new investment for generations to come. It's cost-effective and it's flex flexible. Large facilities are reducing their GHGs or purchasing compliance units to pay for emissions that exceed their limit. And now Ontario facilities have transitioned to Ontario's EPS. We're developing an approach to invest proceeds, as I mentioned, to help our province further reduce these emissions in the years to come. On April of this year, Ontario released its first ever low carbon hydrogen strategy to accelerate the development of low carbon hydrogen economy in the province that will create jobs and reduce emissions. It lays out immediate actions we're taking together with job creators and other partners to capitalize on our competitive advantage 
such as our clean electricity system, as I mentioned. This hydrogen strategy identifies innovative projects that can help secure a clean energy future, with hydrogen playing a critical role as a clean and safe energy source. From hydrogen production projects and hydrogen hubs to exploring electricity rate options for hydrogen producers, we're doing it all. And we know that our province's world-class talent and companies with cutting-edge hydrogen technologies paired with competitive business climate can propel that work even further. We're also making gasoline cleaner. Often we look 10, 15, 20 years in the future, and that's important. But it's also important to secure a clean transition. And that's why we were the first province in Canada's history to require fuel suppliers to gradually phase in an increase to the renewable content requirement, such as ethanol, in regular gasoline to 15% by 2030. We expect this change to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by over a megaton. And what does that mean? That's another 300,000 cars off the road. These efforts and many, many more are helping build our economy while at the same time protecting our environment for generations to come. We have committed as a province to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 30% below 2005 levels by 2030. And I'm pleased to report that according to our most recent modeling, not done by us in the ministry, but by Navius, we're on track to meet our 2030 target. In fact, we're on track to exceed that target. Very few provinces in this nation can say that. In fact, the majority of Canada's progress towards its target has come from Ontario. And this is something that regardless your political stripe for the past generations, we should be incredibly proud of. As our reductions since 2005 surpassed those of any other province, as I mentioned. Our 2020 GHG emissions were down 27% from 2005. And we're doing this with our balanced approach that is reducing our emissions and preparing for the impacts of climate change. An innovative economy is a rich economy and a growing economy and a green economy. But it's also about understanding that building adaptation and resiliency requires investments today. The province launched the first ever climate change impact report. And I've received the first draft and very excited to work with our municipal partners to build on the historic infrastructure investments we're making to ensure that we position Ontario as a leader in withstanding extreme weather events and also building the adaptation and resiliency that we know we need for generations to come. While a government, as I mentioned, is partnering with industry at the Ministry of Environment, we take our stewardship of Ontario's natural beauty uh, very seriously. This is an area that is incredibly close to my heart, as I'm sure I, like many of you, uh, grew up on one of, in one of our many incredible provincial parks. For me, it was Killarney, the Lacloche Mountain Trail, Highland Trail in Algonquin Park. When we talk about charting a new economy, we must do so while also protecting our biodiversity, preserving important uh, natural surroundings, and making sure that we invest in nature-based solutions that we know are critical to fighting climate change. I've touched on the vastness of this province of when I spoke about our critical mineral strategy in the north, but to put that in, in, in perspective, uh, we're over 1 million square kilometers, four times as large as the United Kingdom. We have tremendous natural resources, as I mentioned, like our Great Lakes, which hold 20% of planet Earth's surface fresh water. I was proud to partner with uh, incredible organizations like Pollution Probe uh, to launch Ontario's largest ever uh, plastic capture technology, partnering with leading uh, research institutes like University of Toronto. We're looking at getting serious on microplastics and if you ever find yourself east of Toronto in communities like mine in the harbour in Coburg, you'll see uh, these sea bins in action. About two-thirds of our province's forest and 2% of the world's forests are right here. We partnered with the Nature Conservancy of Canada for the largest boreal a wildlands preservation in this nation's history in the north. Our climate is so varied, as I mentioned, we know we have polar bears in the north, prickly bear cactus in the south. But we know that with this incredible abundance of natural resource comes a responsibility to protect and preserve it. And we're doing this through partnering with municipalities, stakeholders, indigenous communities, and conservation groups. We have a system, as I mentioned, of over 630 provincial parks. Many of you have spent time there this past summer. 9.2 million hectares, 
or 23 million acres. That's about the size of Portugal. A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of announcing that we're proposing to designate Alfred Bog in Eastern Ontario as a new non-operating provincial park. We're expanding our park's footprint. We used to have a park structure that didn't have an online store, didn't have a foundation. We clamored through trying to make online bookings for any of you that have tried to book online. And today we have an online store where 100% of those proceeds are going back into preserving our natural surroundings, protecting biodiversity, protecting species at risk, while also offering important learning opportunities for our next generation and for all of us to learn about our unique biodiversity and our outdoors. It's also good for our mental health and just getting out in the great outdoors. Building on Alfred Bogg, I would be remiss if I didn't highlight um, the work that we're doing with to launch Ontario's first ever operating provincial park. In fact, the first provincial park in 40 years. This is an exciting time as we protect our biodiversity, partner with industry to create clean, green jobs of tomorrow, working with our research institutes, working with our colleges, working with the skilled trades, that incredible skilled trades deficit is a challenge today, but it presents a remarkable opportunity. And we know uh, that the forefront of clean green growth depends on it. Our climate path is one that sees us exceeding our targets and now presents us with the opportunity to look boldly into the future for new initiatives to continue our path for GHG reductions and a net zero future. A government here in Ontario led by Premier Ford has been charting a path that's committed to building innovative, prosperous, green economy, committed to working with all levels of government, committed to building critical infrastructure and planning for growth in a way that we just have never seen in the province of Ontario. And that growth is gonna be clean green growth. That growth is gonna secure jobs for boys and girls across this province. That growth is going to secure long-term capital investments, thanks, as I mentioned, to our clean energy advantage. For those of you visiting Ontario, I hope you find time to get out and view our province's natural view beauties, perhaps visit one of our beautiful provincial parks and see the incredible fall colors. But I'll leave uh, with this in closing. Politicians don't have all of the answers. And for us to truly tackle the challenge that climate change poses all of us, we need to work together. We can't do it on the backs of regulation, on the backs of tax alone, on the backs of government alone. It has to be done working together. And I'm proud that we've worked with the trades. We've worked with incredible industry, with job creators. We're working with our colleges, universities, upper and lower tier levels of governments and our federal partners to position Ontario as a world leader. Thank you for being part of that solution. Thank you for bringing your ideas. I hope you enjoyed today. Uh, thank you for welcoming me and having me at your conference. It's been an honor to be with you. Thank you.